In this video, we talk about creating and naming matrices in R. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, first things first, I wanna point out the difference between a vector and a matrix. So a vector is simply a 1D array versus a matrix, which is a 2D array, basically rows and columns. Now, if you haven't watched my vector video yet, I recommend going and watching that first because you need to understand vectors before you can really start to understand matrices. So go watch that video first if you haven't seen it already, then come back over to this video. Now, one thing I wanna point out is the same rules apply to matrices as vectors. Uh, in particular, there's one data type per matrix, and I'll point that out as we go through the process together. But basically, you might have a numeric or a character or a true, false, or logical um, data types as your matrices, and they're all gonna be the same data type when you're building your matrices, just like when you're doing with vectors. And watch the vector video if that makes no sense to you whatsoever. So let's go ahead and create our first matrix here. We can do it using the matrix function. And then the next value we have is a vector. And this is the data that we're gonna go ahead and put into our matrix, so one through six. And then we can go ahead and specify the number of rows in our matrix. So let's just see what this uh, produces for us real quick. So right now we see our matrix that's been produced. We get our columns, we get our rows, and then we have the data that we, we selected. So one through six, just like our vector that we entered right here. So given that this is just a vector, what if we go ahead and create our own vector? So that's what we're doing here. We're creating a vector using the combined function and we're combining these six characters together in order to make a vector so let's go ahead and run that real quick and now let's go ahead and make a matrix using this v1 vector and same number of rows equals two so let's go ahead and run that real quick and see what we get so now we see that our data is a a b c d e f just like that broken down Alternatively, we could go ahead and set the number of columns compared to the number of rows. So let's go ahead and run that real quick and see what we get. So now we have two columns, just like we set up here in the function. So we get A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, just like that. So simple, hopefully that makes sense and easy, easy to understand. Now what happens if we set you know columns or rows greater than the amount of data inside of our vector that we have. So we only have six values in here, but we're setting 20 rows or 20 columns, I'm sorry, 20 columns set up. So let's see what happens if we do something crazy. Well, we'll notice that it just repeats, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea, right? So it just re repeats or rotates through that vector that you assigned uh, to be entered into your matrix. And also you get a warning message, so data length is six, is not a sub multiple or multiple, blah, blah, blah. So it gives you a little warning message, but it still runs and you can still go ahead and use it if that's something you wanted to go ahead and do. Uh, now, I also wanna point out, you can go ahead and set a matrix as a variable. So just like we set the vector as a variable up here, we can go ahead and set a matrix up as a vector or as a variable, I'm sorry. So M1 is our matrix. And let's go ahead and just run it real quick. Take a look at it. So there we go. That's what our matrix looks like. Now let's go ahead and talk about navigating a matrix real quick. So we can navigate using our brackets, just like we could navigate a vector using brackets. So let's do M1. So that's our matrix. And then it gives us like the coordinates here. So we have our row number first. So it goes row first, and then it goes column second. So let's say we wanna try and get this D out of here. So we can go two, and then two right here, right? So two, two, and we get a D because D is the value in row two, column two. We could switch it to three if we wanted to. And then we get row two, column three is F, and that's what we get right here. So you can navigate matrices using these brackets here. Simple, easy to understand. Now, a couple other ways you can go ahead and create matrices are with R bind and C bind. So R bind stands for row bind and C bind stands for column bind. So we'll go through some examples here and it'll make perfect sense as we walk through it together. Let me go ahead and set up two more vectors real quick. So we got V2 and it's cat, dog, lizard. So we're gonna go ahead and run that real quick. And then we got V3 or vector three and it's a vector with three numbers in it, one, two, three. 
right? So there we go. I want to point out real quick that you'll notice that the V2 is a character vector, cat, dog, lizard, and V3 is an integer vector, one, two, three. But if we come back up here, uh, we know that there's only going to be one data type per matrix. So let's see what happens when we combine these two vectors together. What, what happens? So come down here. And the first thing we'll do is C bind. So that's column bind. And we have uh, vector two and vector three here. So we're combining those two vectors together. And let's run it real quick and see what comes out the other end. So this is what we get now. We get V2. So cat, dog, lizard. So again, we're combining columns. So it goes down. So then cat, dog, lizard, down. And then V3 is one, two, three, which are the three values that we set up in our V3 vector here. And as you'll notice, there are quotes around these numbers, and that means that it's been converted to characters. So these are this is a whole character matrix now instead of a character and an int matrix. So we wouldn't be able to do any math with these numbers is the point because they've been converted to characters compared to numeric values where we can do math with them. So again, watch a vector video if you're having a hard time understanding these data types because I explain it in greater detail in that video. And this video is more focused on matrices as opposed to vectors. So anyway, that's C bind, so column bind. So R bind, you know, works similarly, except you're combining based on the rows. So now we got cat, dog, lizard across a row, and then V3, uh, the numbers one, two, three, one, two, three across a row. So that's how C bind and R bind work. Hopefully that makes sense. Pretty easy to understand, pretty intuitive once you play around with it a little bit. Now, one thing that can be helpful is adding rows with R bind and then the same concept with C bind. So you can use R bind to add rows or C bind to add columns to your data. So if you're adding you know, rows of data, it's easy to use the R bind function to do that. So let's go through an example real quick. So let's, let's relook at M1, our first matrix that we went ahead and set up and it goes A, A, C, E, B, D, F. And let's say that we wanna go ahead and add a row to this particular matrix, right? So let's go ahead and create a new matrix called M2. We're gonna use the R bind function and we're gonna go ahead and use our original matrix here, the M1 matrix that we printed out down here. And we're going to add a row to it. So we're gonna add the cat, dog, lizard row to our M1 matrix. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. And then let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's run this real quick. And now we see we have uh, our entire matrix here. We got our M1 matrix at the top and then our V2 vector two down here at the bottom as our new row we added. And we could go ahead and navigate just like normal. So if we wanted to go to row three, column three, uh, we get lizard and you see we get lizard right here. But you'll notice that the numbers like right up here, the row numbers are, are different. Like there's no numbers here. Uh, and even though it's not showing those numbers, you can still navigate to that particular row or column. Um, but that brings me to the next point of this video is naming rows and columns. Because as you can see, if you start adding stuff and combining stuff, like the, the numbers get off and or aren't visible and it can be hard to keep track of everything. So what you can go ahead and do is just name your rows and columns and that way everything's kept nice and neat. So to name rows and columns, you use either our names or call names to go ahead and add the names. So right now we're gonna be using the M2 matrix. So this one that we just created right here and we're gonna go ahead and add some names to it so we can keep it organized or more organized and navigate a little easier. So the first function is row names. Right here in the parentheses, we put the matrix that we wanna go ahead and add the names to. And then we'll go ahead and use a vector here just using the combine function and we'll go ahead and give the rows their name. So just R1, R2, R3, just to keep it simple and run that real quick. And then I'll go ahead and look at my matrix now. And now we see that I got R1, R2, R3 going down my as my row names. Uh, same concept then with the call names. So call names is the function. We put our matrix uh, variable in here and then we go ahead and use a vector to assign the column names we want to go ahead and use. Let's run that real quick and then take another look at our matrix. And now we see we've got C1, C2, C3, R1, R2, R3. And so it's a little easier to read. And then of course we can go ahead and navigate with row and column names now. So now in my row, I put R3 
and then for my column, I put column three or C3, and so that should output lizard, right? So if I run it, we navigate straight to lizard because it went R3, C3, which is lizard. And so now I can easily navigate using the names of the rows and columns that I assign versus using the, the actual number or position of the rows or columns based on the matrix. And so that's pretty much it for this video. We cover quite a bit on creating matrices and adding to matrices and navigating around matrices. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.